in the middle of a dark winter's night in a small Midwest farming community, the two-story home of a young family caught fire. Quickly, parents and children followed their well-practiced emergency plan and made their way through the smoke-filled home out into the front yard. There, the father quickly counted heads and realized that their five-year-old son was not among them. Suddenly, he heard a, a wail and looked up to see the boy at his bedroom window, crying, rubbing his eyes. Knowing the danger of re-entering the house, the father yelled out to his son to jump, that he would catch him. Between the sobs, the boy responded to the voice he knew so well, but I can't see you, Daddy. The father answered with great assurance, no, son, you can't see me, but I can see you. Jump. At that, the boy jumped into the smoky darkness and found himself safely cradled in his father's arms. Our scripture readings for today are about trusting, about having faith, about turning to God, even when perhaps we're blinded that he is in our presence. You know, with all this year and all that it has entailed, we may feel like we too are in a, in a burning house, right? We have this pandemic we have civil unrest. We have the election coming up. It's a lot. And all the effects of this high anxiety. Maybe we know somebody or we ourselves have suffered with COVID-19. Maybe we find ourselves without a job now, struggling financially. There's just so much going on right now, and the weight is is very heavy. We are in a storm. Then uh, the apostles in the gospel today encountered that same overwhelming anxiety and fear because they were in the midst of a literal storm. They were out fishing the fourth watch of the night, which meant 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Often the apostles would fish at night, I think it was cooler out of the sun. And they're on the Sea of Galilee in this boat, and as would happen on the Sea of Galilee, still happens, a storm comes out of nowhere. And they know that if, if their boat sinks, if they capsize, they are likely to drown. It's a real threat. They could easily die. So they are afraid they're panicking when all of a sudden, in the midst of this storm, they see this figure walking towards them on the water. And all they can think of is, this has to be a ghost. No man can walk on water. So it's like they're in the scene of a bad Stephen King movie or something, right? They have a storm that they're going to die, and then this ghost comes walking towards them. It's like, really? My gosh, what next? And then Jesus says something that's very dramatic. He says, yells out to them, take courage, it is I. Now that's how it's translated in the scripture we, we heard. But perhaps a more accurate, accurate translation is I am. Jesus says I am. What does that refer to? Remember, that's God, I am. So he's telling them, Remember, I'm God. God is with you. See, take courage. Be not afraid. I am here with you. In the midst of your storm, in the midst of your anxiety and fear, I am here. And sometimes we can forget that, can't we? That Jesus is with us, especially in the trials of life. He is alongside 
I remember World Youth Day in Rio, Brazil, and think about this, two, three million people there. It was wonderful. And the Pope was there. It's a big gathering of Catholic youth around, from around the world. It's really, I call it a Catholic Woodstock. Anyway, okay. But it's, it's really phenomenal. And we wanted to see the Jesus statue, you know, that's in Rio. It's famous. It's huge. And so I'm excited to see it. And so we make our way up the mountain. And would you know it, by the time we got up the mountain, the fog had come in. So all I could see was the base of the statue. And someone said to me in our group, they said, you know, Father, just because you can't see him doesn't mean he can't see you. Doesn't mean he's not there. See, sometimes the anxieties of life, all the fog, all the noise, can blind us to see Jesus, right? He is there. And Peter, on the boat, sees Jesus walking, and he's like, I want to try this. Who wouldn't want to? Maybe I can walk on water, man. And so he asked Jesus if he could come towards him, and he begins to walk on the water. Can you imagine that? And he almost gets to Jesus, and what happens? What happens? He gets distracted, doesn't he? He takes his eyes off of Jesus. He takes his eyes off the Son of God, our Messiah. And what happens? He begins to sink again. He sinks. And he reaches out to Jesus, and Jesus is there, and Jesus grabs him, pulls him up. See, the key to persevering through the storms of life, and we all will encounter them, we are encountering them now, is to go to Jesus. He is there. He's always there. Early in the gospel, we heard that Jesus had gone to the mountain by himself in a very quiet place to do what? To pray. To be with his heavenly Father. To receive that strength, that wisdom in his humanity. And Elijah, in our first reading, where does he hear God? Where does he encounter God? Is it in all the noise, the storm, and all this? No. What is it? It says, in a soft noise. A so better translation, soft voice. A low voice. And quiet. We must spend time with Jesus in prayer. In quiet Especially now, I can tell you I uh, went over for my hour in the Adoration Chapel on Thursday morning, and it was much needed. I found myself with great peace in that hour, and I wanted to spend another, another two hours, honestly, which is unusual for me, to be honest with you. But it was just like an overwhelming experience of peace, which I really needed at that moment. There, I just went in there and sat and just stared at Jesus, and he stared back at me. I didn't do anything for the first 20 minutes except stare at him. And an overwhelming sense of Jesus is here with me, and he loves me, and he strengthened me. He gave me peace. And then I encourage all of us to really do this, even if you're not going to the Adoration Chapel. Each week, I encourage you to do this, to pray with the gospel that's coming up for that next Sunday. And we have now a little handout with the gospel at the doors of the church, and we're going to start putting it in the bulletin, and I'm going to have those sheets out in front of the Adoration Chapel. It's called Lexio Divina. It's a very, very powerful way to pray with God, to listen to God, to find peace, to find strength, to find joy. And this is what you do. It's very easy. Three-step process. I'm telling you, this is powerful. Number one, read. Read the passage. 
Read it slowly. Read it a couple times. And then reflect. Number two, reflect. A word or a phrase will jump out at you. What is it? Maybe in the gospel today, for instance, it's take courage. I am. Do not be afraid. And you reflect. It's meditation. All right, Lord. I read your word. You're speaking to me. Now what are you trying to tell me through this? I, I'm getting take courage. Take courage. Take courage. I am. So maybe that, then the third step is resolution. Read, reflect, resolution. Okay? Make a very concrete resolution based on that. Maybe it is, Lord, you're telling me, take courage, be not afraid. Okay. All right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend at 9 a.m. tomorrow 30 minutes in prayer with you in the guest bedroom of my home. And I'm going to read a passage of scripture and pray with it. You see how very specific that is? Because if we just say, I'm going to be nicer, okay, whatever. Be specific. If we don't act on the word, we will not be transformed by the word. In fact, some of the saints said it's more dangerous if we read scripture and pray with it and not act on it. They say you can get hubris and become very prideful. Read, reflect, resolute. That will change your life. And I just ask, once a week do that. You can come into our chapel. It's very quiet, very peaceful. It's a wonderful place to be in the presence of Jesus, see. So, yes, there are storms, and it can be absolutely overwhelming. By the way, don't watch too much cable news. Please, for the love of God. It is not healthy. You know, the overwhelming negative news that you hear on TV anymore, that's what the devil wants. You can get informed quickly. Then go to the, to, to the good news of Jesus Christ and learn and experience his great love for you. See, that's the way. Jesus speaks to you today, this morning. Remember, he is here with us now. And he says to all of us, take courage. Come. It is I. I am. Be not afraid.